guys, we are back with the fourth round, not the final round this week. Looks like we may be going to five after this. It does depend on one game. A bit of a David versus Goliath. If Alex wins, I believe that's it. But if Alex loses, um, we, he is against uh, Jacob, then we will be going to a fifth round. So, Jacob, wow. Yeah, uh, but he's playing Gigawall. And so, you know, it is a good death. What more can we say? No, there's nothing about that. In the meantime, though... Is this the same Jacob the Hillier said that he doesn't know what he's doing with the deck? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> <laughs> In the meantime, though, shrugging off the uh, the overcoat of commentary, Kiddy on the left playing his Fire Ice Cat 6 versus Ben and his Four Colour Wall Brasker edition. Mm. So we could be in for an interesting one here. Uh, timer is Ray the Rock. As soon as we see, we'll give them a thumbs up, and they can just start whenever they want. I was playing this. I was playing against Ben a few weeks back. I really do like the addition of Brass. It's a little bit different. But it definitely adds its own little element to it. Uh, Ooh, what's going on? I think think we're not too happy with the sleeves, but uh, it's, that's that's not what'll be happening here. Um, just wondering if they might be getting a little thin. But let's shuffle up. People are taking their seats all around the room. I don't know if they're expecting a thumbs up from me or not. But, uh, and away we go. Yeah. Again, may not be the last round of the night, guys, so stay tuned. If not, we'll give you a, a quick wrap up after we speak to whoever wins this if we have time. But we can expect. Now, this is, this is probably the list that Kitty went uh, top cut with at Materia Cup. But we've also seen Ben in the past. Braska doing a lot of work. Uh, as a bit of a lightning rod and also the multi element to be able to, I mean, to pull off those aspects. The material cup was what one, maybe two opuses ago now. Uh, yeah, so, so maybe yeah. That, so there must maybe there are some different additions to this. Not sure what, but it depends. I mean, we could potentially be seeing the new crystal version with Scion. Um, but Ben going straight in with Klaus, finding himself a King Tycoon. Let's get those colours underway. It's going to look like a rainbow very shortly on the deck, I think, on the box, on the... Yeah, and the thing is, you've got to, you've got to kind of consider here for Kitty, what's, what's your best option? It's probably try and get to Setter as quickly as possible, start Dolan and freezing those backups, potentially with a lock and Celeste combo. Um, I mean, yes. Ki Kitty putting his uh, FF6 mat down as well, very nice, but he also couldn't put it straight. Is that Incept or Shadow? That is Shadow, so it's going to reveal top five, add a two drop uh, backup to hand, and I believe you get to play a two drop backup as well. Um, yeah, play one backup of cost two or less. So this is pretty good. We're going to, yeah, so this is a crystal variant. Okay, so this isn't completely Kiddie's list from uh, Materia Cup, so it does look like he's updated it. Be interesting to see what additions he's made and whether he thinks they're better or if he's just done them just to change pace. So Shadow as a forward is definitely a new uh, a new card here, but also we're probably going to be seeing Cyan from this set. Um, you know, Cyan's a wonderful card. Yeah. So so we're probably seeing sort of a definitely a bit more of a crystal package. Now King Tycoon is going to go after Lena here. Ben off to the races with his colours just needs to find this source of fire probably via Tyro or uh, actually I'm not even sure what fire backups he's actually using I'm sure we're going to find it very shortly is that a Chantal that we've just seen in the fire? if it is it's definitely worth keeping because 6 can go super wide super quick um, I'm sure that's a Chantal that we've seen Elena. obviously we've seen Elena yeah. and what are we going to see oh, oh and there's, yes. there's the interceptor and away Shadow goes. So, I I'd didn't see, see that, that one. Yeah, sorry about the glare on that one, guys. Here's the title to hand. Yeah, now we're going to see... So do we see Lena then Tyro next turn? Or do we... I think we probably see him both this turn. I think we're seeing now. Here's yeah. Tyro. Search your wall. And then we get down the Lena, play the wall next turn. And we'll see... Yeah, there's that wall. Oh, that's a lovely full art as well. Flex in there, Ben. Good flex. So... There's no better way to say, look at me. Yeah, the issue we got now, if you're kiddie, is you don't really have the answer to 
the wall. We see a Sabin in the bin and an Edgar in the bin. That would have been a big help. There's a lot of good easy, not easy ways. You know, you have to draw the cards, but you can re usually reliably get the save in a way. Yeah. Well, that's an Amaterasu going as well. At least caught that one. That's two nil so far, the kitty. Some big, well, they say some big hits. I don't know what the first hit was, but that Amaterasu is definitely going to make a difference. And there's a Sellers. So we're looking for a lock, I'm guessing here, because. Uh, which lock do you go for? There we are. Yeah, you, you go for the three drop lock because you can, in theory, get enough uh, guys out here that that big ten drop wall makes no difference. Um, and Cyan, is he cat six as well? Yeah, Cyan's is, cat six. Yeah, so, is, so everything on the board so far is cat six except for the knight, I believe. So yeah, Cyan, at least he, and Cyan can also generate his own crystals, which helps a lot once he's down. Yeah, now. Yeah. The biggest thing for this lock is potentially the, the four party attack trigger. That will be what deals with that lock. Oh, there they go. There's Shantoto. Yeah. Weren't ever going to see that pay off. We, we knew Ben had it. So, uh, nice quick turn. His colours are now completely fixed without the Lena. But there is that lock. Another beautiful full art. I think you still want the Lena down, don't you, for this S effect? Of course. You know, the thing is, though, you're against Cat 6, and the amount of you know, EX burst that that's going to make a difference for is probably limited. Um, and we're going just in with the Demon. I don't hate this because, you know, you know your opponent has the wall in hand. Demon, yeah, you drop him, remove the Brig Zone, and it just smegs whatever it touches, doesn't well, it? It's not going to be enough yet. The Brig Zone oh. looks like it's only got, what, seven in there, six in there? No, seven. Seven. So it's not enough yet. <coughs> that wall is going to come down. One tap. Yeah. So we're going to see the Brig Zone fueled a little bit more now, because obviously he's going to have to get rid of some cards. Well, maybe he doesn't have to. Maybe that's why he's counting his Brig Zone there, to see what's going on, how many keeping hands. Again, though, we're seeing, seeing a, an Amaterasu already in there. So we know at least two Amaterasus have gone on Ben's side of the board. Some, some good fuel in Kitty's side as well. But unfortunately, he's, he's ditched an Egger and he's ditched a Sabin, which feel like they could have been real big right now. Yeah, well, I just wish we could do... Yep, I'm still going for the GoPro cam so we can see what's in his hand. So um, I think we got a Cecil, perhaps? A, a six drop Leviathan, a Mist Dragon. That's that kind, of, kind of all I can tell right now. An Ark, maybe? I was definitely thinking more Kitty Than because he's kept that very secret so far. Yeah. He doesn't uh, even want to. He doesn't even want the people at home to know what's in his hands. Hopefully, he's got something to just to keep the ticking over. The thing is, you, you're still ahead by a couple of points. Um, you got a Crystal on the field. I don't think it matters if you take a couple points of damage here. Yeah. There's the arc. No, he's still not still not sure here is Ben. Oh, well he's Does this help the opponent where you show them what you're gonna think of play and then retract it? Well I mean technically in an organized play that would have been a play and taking it back is kind of a kind of a no no, but we're all friends nope, around he's you. He's digging so. in. He's sticking with it. Let's see what he's gonna turn over. Anything decent? See what we those have. top five are. There's a Tyro, a Kukalina Warrior Light, another Ark, and another Claris. I mean, mm. the only one that's really beneficial is the Kukalina. Yep, there yeah. it goes. I mean, even then, I don't. I, it might make a difference if you, you know, Kitty somehow got to four forwards and have that, you know, four party attack trigger with the lock. Yeah. But I don't think we're going to get there. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So ending for turn and discarding oh, the set. That's spot. interesting. More fuel oh. for the break zone. Oh wait, he can't be discarding for turn. What was he discarding for there? There must be a reason. <coughs> there has to be a reason for that, but we're not. We're missing. Well, let me confuse. But either way, first point of damage on Kitty's side of the field. Kitty feels like he's kind of hurting for backups here. It's been story of the night for some of the lads, hasn't it? They just it's backups seem to be a bit camera shy tonight. Yeah, sometimes that's just the way it goes. Sometimes your decks betrays you, and uh, and you're oh, left wondering whether you've I done think, something wrong. I think we've all been there. Yeah, I mean, not surprising for Dan Harbin's last game because five in the deck, you, you, you know. 
exactly. It that. does feel almost pointless, but yeah, you didn't think at this point why have the five? Why not just make it zero and yeah. go forward? It's something we'll have to ask Gaz today because obviously he's probably that deck and definitely gonna have to speak to him about that one. Yeah, but we're going with Banana Sid on uh, search. What is? What are you going for here? What is? You see. So, any six forward, I, I mean, if you could hold a turn, I suppose you could get your your Edgar, so you can hit a couple of those, well, the Sabin, yeah. definitely the Tim Break. And Kitty seems to have built this, it's almost almost all cat six, so the likelihood of him whiffing on this is oh, probably no. minimal. No, you, you're never going to whiff. Cat six tends to play only cat six yeah. stuff. Um, Doesn't like mixing with others, does it? <laughs> no. But, again, not many of the lists also play the five drop lock anymore, so it's not as crucial to play just everything cat six. But Kitty has gone with the Edgar. Looks like he's going to see if he can hold the turn out and, uh, and hit something in the break zone. But we do know, I think, that Ben has a Mist Dragon in hand, so if that, yes. that Edgar is not going to get anything back. Coming in, there goes a demon. The walls next, and a Shantoto. And the Shantoto. That one crystal could have been somewhat useful uh, to keep stuff dulled down, but oh, yeah, looking at both Shantotos on the board, I stick by what I said about the Elevens. The artwork is just wonderful. And here's when we do not <laughs> see very often a Gallop. That guy is a big chunky boy. He is. Now, he just gets bigger and bigger, swinging in, he just deal, he's dealing damage. Now, if by some way or how the kid he played a demon of his own and targeted the break zone, that Gallop is just going to swallow all those forwards up and the damage will be negligible at best. Yes, of course, because if he removes them before the demon touches them... Yeah, exactly that. Um, and all of a sudden you've got a 30, 40,000 K blocker on the board yeah, yeah. for that one turn. Yeah. So, finally getting a Sab in... We know, we definitely know that Ben has a Mist Dragon in hand, and Ben knows that he, you know, he's, he's staring at Edgar. This could be a painful turn for Kitty when he gets. He's gonna try, obviously he's gonna try. I think I think that is why he went with the Sabin instead of trying to get it back from Break Zone. Um, the Mog though coming in for free. It's a big 9k. <laughs> it's not gonna be enough though because that Gallop is gonna start swinging. Oh. So we are going to minus off the abilities using the Kuka Lane. Uh, this, is, this is the Mog here that, uh, that Kitty played. One cheaper, free to cat six character, so obviously it's coming in for free. Uh, when Mog six attacks all forwards, you control game first strike. So I would include the party if they all have first strike. But he's on damage three, so the Dolan freeze, and he's quite rightly gone after the Galif. Yeah, you don't want that guy up right if you don't help it. Absolutely not, because if it attacks, it is just going to nuke whatever yeah. it wants. You know, you just get rid of the cards, all of a sudden you can 11, through whatever you want. You're attacking for whatever you want, yeah. removing whatever you want. So, Kitty sat with a full grip. He needs, he needs something with a bit of removal. If he could, well, we again. It's hard to see what's in his hand, but like we know he has the Edgar, but he's just ditching the Edgar for a Sellers instead. That's interesting. Now he must know that he, he that must Gallif is going to do what Gallif does. No, I think he's he's kind of got the inkling that maybe the Mist Dragon is there, um, because if yeah. if you if you smack a if you smack your, your Edgar down now. And you get Mist Dragon, it feels bad. Um, but going after the lock is interesting. Lock is the only thing that can attack so far, so maybe Kitty's thinking here that his lock is not long for this world. Yeah. But Again, all of a sudden I'm just wondering where you managed to get that full arch on Toto. I know it's nothing to do with the game, but it's all. I have one of those. I hate you. And I, I randomly pulled it the last time I won an OP with Monks, funnily enough. Wow. Yeah. You had to get the Monks conversation here somewhere, didn't you? Ah, well, you did it earlier. <laughs> I felt like it was my time. But, uh, yeah, it was one of my prize packs. Happened to pull that good old beauty. That's wonderful. Yeah, I do have a full ad with the anniversary box, which isn't a shiny one. But, yeah. 
But what are we going to do? To, what are we going to do now? This seem, I mean, he's got most of his deck in his hand at the moment there, with Ben. <laughs> yeah. well, he's just going to do what he feels like by the looks of it now. It, the thing is, he, we do know again that this is the Braska edition of Wall. So you just discard Braska, dis, uh, discard this, discard that. Well, summon, it's summon, 7k for every summon, isn't it? Uh, I believe so, And yeah. then there's the um, Giga Summon as well, which is brutal. Let's, uh, let's have a look. Well, so for every summon, you can every, you can discard a summon to do 7k damage without paying the cost for the S effect, but then there's a second S effect. Yeah, that's it. It's uh, the, the Grand Summon. Yeah. Choose two forwards opponent controls and break them, dealing a point of damage. That's the big one. Yeah, and, and also he's got all the colours online if he wants to do it. And here it comes. Nebraska is down. And we're gonna we are Sabin and Mog was that? Yeah, absolutely. Def I think they're the right choices here. Um, especially the Sabin. So this in he, he needs he needs to do something if he could kind of remove uh, the forwards out of the way, but you know, I Ice Fire doesn't really have anything for that. Yes. So regardless, we're seeing Kitty probably going to lose both forwards here. And I suppose it makes sense because then if he's got more summons, the other two are only seven k, so they can be dealt with. Whereas the Sabin and the Mog are too big for the basic. The big, the um, biggest thing is well, that we've seen is that the uh, a we're losing the Sabin on Kitty's side of the board, but Ben has now given up that Mist Dragon. Oof, and the Although, Santa goes one, two, three, four, five, six. And that Braska is now, it feels like it may have clinched it for Ben. Kitty facing lethal next turn and a absolutely monstrous board. Braska is definitely the 5k card that could. Yeah. If Kitty could somehow get two forwards out there with haste, then he could attack and wipe the board using uh, the lock effect. And what's the lock effect? So I believe it's when four or more Cat Six party attack, uh, you break all forwards opponent controls. Oh wow! That yeah. Is... So uh, so when two or more attack, um, obviously you could just form party attack. Lock deals your opponent a point of damage. If four or more attack, then also break all forwards opponent controls. So if you attack with four, you get both effects. Yes, which is big, but you've I... also got to get through. Yeah. Oh, there's a 5k to something? I didn't miss I think what? probably to the lock, but this is, I think, the only way... The, the issue that, that you sat on, though, if you're kiddie, is Braska's still out there. Braska next turn could grand summon again and end this... As a contest. Yeah. So, unless by some miracle Ben has the CP and summon in hand to do it, I, which I very much doubt, but you never know. I mean, Kiddy is another top quality player. If he's going to pull it, if anyone can pull it out, he's definitely able to. Now, does he have the Mist Dragon again? He does have yes, a Mist Dragon? Can he, he play it? Can he play it? He can. There's a Mist Dragon. I think we're saying goodbye to Mr. It's Kitty. Be, it's going to be GG. Yeah, there's. Because again, Braska just needs to get to get to turn and shoot off again and. It is over. I think that's what they have the conversation about now. Trying to figure out is it worth going to the next turn or is it just a foregone conclusion? Well, we got an Amaterasu in hand for Kitty. Not much else that we're looking at there, though. There's a Sabin, but we don't have um, the other one for the S effect. So. And said Gallop turning in. He's, Gallop can get rid of whatever he wants as well on the attack. I'm wondering if that Sabin might be his way out here. Because um, it's this guy. If you control the former, he's reduced by two. When Sabin enters the field, choose up to the same number of forwards as his opponent controls as category six characters put into the break zone from the game. No, so he needs to lose Still a couple yet, forwards. Mate. So He's not big enough, you know... Okay, these Braska is only 7k right now, but everything else is just huge on that side of the board as well. Yeah. With the arc being out, giving everything 2,000. As we said, Galif just he decides how big he is. So what are we trying here? We're going to Dull Freeze 2 okay. on the Sellers party and deal an appointed damage, but he runs straight like, into a coup set. You don't want to see that when you're kidding, do you? Never punished is Ben. 
Okay, so he's just gonna have free reign. What do I want to bring back? Probably something for a grand summon as effect. Say, brass, is, it, is it a brass in hand? No, you probably get the Edgar to, to pay for the grand summon, and that'll be enough. But does Ben have another another? Uh, does Edgar let you? I thought it was only cut six for Edgar. Uh, no, so it's the newer Edgar. Okay. Um, again, Kitty feeling punished himself because he's never punished uh, versus his opponent is the six drop Leviathan. I mean, what can you do if you're just running into <laughs> experts? What can you do? It must feel almost personal at this point. Uh, I think I think we're going to see another grand summon next turn, and that will be that. Kitty has pitched a beauty, but I think that is all he wrote. Slapping down Interceptor. Oh, some big cards, there's Demon. So we're trying now, Demon. do we see what we were talking about earlier? Or is he going to... Uh, yep, he just eats it with yeah, Gallif. and that is it. <laughs> that is the problem. You make Gallif live too long, Gallif can do whatever he wants. And now Gallif is probably in six figures. It doesn't matter. I, you know, it's, uh, but he is tapped, so he's not going to do anything. No, but, but the biggest thing... It does thing, stop the yeah, Demon dealing damage to yeah, everything else. Yeah, he, he saved the Braxker, and that is the main thing. Um... Because at the very least, you leave two cards in break. Okay, yeah. this, uh, oh, they couldn't quite oh, decide oh, on how to Awkward shake and fist bump, but uh, <laughs> well played by Ben there. Braska putting in a show in. For a 2 cost 5k forwards, he's, yeah. he's lifting quite heavy. Well, that leaves us with nine minutes on the round, guys, so we'll do a quick beer right back. We'll probably get Ben over for a quick uh, talk about Braska Wall. And we will also see if we are going to the fifth and final round. So we will be right back. <laughs> All right, guys, we are back with Ben, winner of round four. Congratulations. Braska putting in some work. Yeah, it's a powerhouse of a card. Vast end of plate. And I think it fits so perfectly in with just the fact that it's a multi element deck, right? Oh, yeah. You know, that grand summon. Even though Kitty was trying everything he could to get rid of it, at any point you'd just be like, well, I win the game now. Yeah. Um, it's very interchangeable with my deck between Braska and Lulu. Um, but with the amount of mono ice decks that are around that just can't do anything about Braska on the field. Because you don't need to tap it to Grand Summon, just Grand Summon everything. I remember talking to you, I think I played you before the Winter Cup and you had it then. Yeah. And I look, I'm, you pulled it out, you dropped it, I'm like, I just didn't expect it. What's that? Do? But what, what, when can you remember when you was building a deck? What your thought process was about including it? Uh, mono was ice. It, was it mono ice? Mono ice. Yeah, like a lot. A lot of our friends who were practicing a lot uh, played a lot of mono ice, and Lulu just wasn't cutting it. Even with Brunhilde to kill one thing, it was just there's no extra value. Whereas being able to seven k anything at any given time, or to just break two things and deal point damage whenever you want, yeah, it's just too strong. So is it three of in the deck? Or two. Two of uh, But it runs three tarot, so you can fetch it out. It runs um, bash, so you can get it through that. And you've got meath as well. So yeah. It's plenty of ways to go and oh, find him. Yeah. And I'm assuming plenty of ways to recur the summons as well. So uh, two and I to recur summons, but it runs 13 summons, I think it is, in the deck. So, so it's if... Plenty. Sorry, no. I was saying it's nice to see, you know, there's plenty in there. Um, how's it? So we did see as well, you kind of had pretty much all the answers to that game. Um, obviously, two Miss Dragon pretty much uh, when you needed them. You knew you had the Edgar. How, but how big early on was the Shadow Whipping for you? Did it make any difference to your game plan at all? Or? It made no difference to my game plan, but it slowed Cat 6 down. Like, Cat 6 is a deck that knocked me out of the Winter Cup. Like, lost to it in day one and then kicked me out on day two. Same player as well, if you're watching. <laughs> <laughs> Grudge match has been yeah, formed. Just, uh, well. But no, it's normally a really rough match. Having that whiff just cost them too much. Is there any changes obviously you've seen uh, that you've obviously tested with the deck that you might consider going forward, or do you think it's kind of set in stone at the moment? Um, Mono Ice is dropping off a bit. Um, maybe it is time to retire Braska, but I just like him too much. Uh, the Fiend is also very good, so if uh, Water it starts cropping up a bit more, I'll throw Fiends back in. But it's just a toolbox deck. Yeah. It just does what it needs to, four colours and 
why he can just win games by itself. I know you said about Ice is why he's there. Are there any other decks that you see? Um, it's like again, Cat Six and whatnot. Do I do any other kind of decks that you sort of fear at the moment? Or you Chaos care? Arc. It's Chaos Arc. It's just anything with fear is Chaos Arc. Anything with Chaos Arc. <laughs> My one loss today, Chaos Arc. Is like, uh, <laughs> get rid of two of them, they play the third. It's like, okay, cool. <laughs> All right, recurring the Arc, are you? Yeah, okay. okay. <laughs> I'll, I'll just play with no hand. Oh. Yeah. Oh well, well, congratulations on the win, obviously, there in round four. We're not sure if we're going to be going to round five, guys, so we'll do a quick beer back and see if we have an answer for you. Okay.